My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Sometimes when you're making mock-ups and prototypes, there are special situations that pop up. In this case, I need to simulate a blow molded part and I'm gonna slip cast that in resin and I'm gonna show you how I do that. We're gonna be stacking up several layers of colored resin. So what we need to do is create some color or pigment ahead of time. I'm using some B part of the resin and mixing in my color first. So I have that ready to go. And we're gonna mix up some resin like we normally would for any sort of resin cask. We'd only need a very small amount of A and B. I'm using a smooth on clear cast here. And then we're gonna add just a couple of drops of that color. It's pretty concentrated and we do want it to be translucent. All right, once we've got it mixed up really good, we're gonna pop it into the vacuum tank and we're gonna degas it really well take out all the air that we can and we're going to add it into our two-piece silicone mold and just like slip casting we're going to rotate the resin on the inside of that mold and we're going to allow it to coat the inside of that mold and we're going to let it run out whatever we don't need we're going to pop it into the pressure tank and put it under about 60 psi of pressure just to keep the bubbles at a minimum because we don't want the moisture in the air to affect the urethane resin and the pressure tank is going to allow us to do that. We're going to take it out and we're going to repeat the process. We're going to do this several times. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, we got the excess resin in the cup. We're going to go back for round two. Again, degassing, putting it into the mold. We're going to slosh it around and we're going to recoat the inside of the mold and we're going to dump out what we don't need. We're going to pop it back into the pressure tank and let it cure with some more heat and do it again. For those of you that don't know what slip casting is, it's a ceramic process where they use uh, plaster molds and the plaster soaks the moisture out of the slip material, which is the ceramic slurry that they put into the molds. And over time, uh, you're able to create a thick shell and then they dump out the rest of the material, kind of like we're doing here with the resin, but it's a ceramic. And that's how they're able to do vessels uh, and jars and things like that. And so I'm just adapting that process. So we're taking it out of the tank here for the last time. And it's time to uh, see what we got. We're going to slowly uh, peel the two pieces apart. Need to be careful. This is a pretty delicate piece, mainly because of that uh, engineered um, connection that runs down the middle of the part. It's quite delicate and it's quite thin. The rest of the part is pretty strong and rigid. And boom, 
There's your part. Simulated, uh, blow molded part gives you a thickness. There's components that go on the inside of this thing and they had to fit. So it's not just something that uh, we're just trying to fake. Uh, this thing had to work. So we're going to use the Dremel tool. We're going to clean up the parts a little bit and we're going to get it to what a trimmed blow molded part would look like uh, if you were going to manufacture something like this. So this is a pre-production part basically where you're trying to test out, make sure your process is going to work. Maybe you're going to show it to investors. Uh, maybe you need to do some engineering testing, adjustments. It's pretty standard kind of stuff. Let's take things to the next level. We're going to add some graphics to this thing. So the same way you would do this for like a movie prop or something like this, uh, in this case high-end prototype, we're going to use a dry transfer, uh, image transfer, create the artwork in uh, Illustrator, I send it away and uh, comes back with this uh, rub down and it's a uh, basically lacquer paint um, and it's how you add graphics to prototypes. Oftentimes you would clear coat something like this. If your business or company needs assistance with consumer product design and development and prototyping, feel free to reach out. I'm pretty sure I can assist. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line.